Hey guys, welcome back. So today I thought that I would chat with you all about some standout and memorable cozy mystery sidekicks and side characters. Now, I have been reading a lot of cozy mysteries lately and one of the things that has started to stand out to me are these side characters. Um, if you're at all familiar with cozy mysteries, you'll know that obviously they center around a singular character. That character is more often than not the amateur sleuth who is solving the crime. However, in a lot of cozy mysteries, what you'll also see are a quirky cast of side characters or sidekicks. And those are the ones that have started to really stand out or that typically stand out, especially if they are featured throughout the series in addition to our main character. So um, I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity for me to kind of run down the list of some of my favorites. Obviously, this is not an all-encompassing list, but um, just a really fun way to spotlight some of my favorite cozy mysteries along with, again, some of my favorite side characters. Now, I will say before we jump into the list, um, I didn't really have a certain criteria when pulling from this other than the fact that the characters be memorable. So some of them are integral to the plot in the sense to where they somehow help our main character solve crimes. And then others are just stand out in their own right just because of their personality. They are, um, you know, typically on the sidelines. They are introduced every once in a while, but they don't necessarily play an integral role in helping the hero or heroine solve the mystery. But that said, they still have a spot on this list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into who exactly some of my favorite sidekicks are in Cozy Mysteries. First up, I thought that I would talk about what I think is the most interesting sidekick on this list, and that is Sister Daria from Harper Kincaid's Bookbinding Mysteries. And now, if you couldn't already tell, Sister Daria is a nun, or at the very least, she is a nun in training in the first book. And um, I think that it is so interesting because I've never read a cozy mystery that mentioned or read any references to religion or faith. And don't get me wrong, this book doesn't necessarily beat you over the head with those elements, but at the same time, Sister Daria does grapple with um, becoming a nun and how that affects her relationship with the main heroine, who is in fact her cousin. Now, one of the things that I love about Sister Daria, and one of the reasons why I wanted to include her on this list, is because she's not what you would consider your stereotypical nun. And I say that because uh, not only does she say that and basically everybody else in the story <laughs> um, but at the same time she is known as having had a wild streak growing up our main heroine was surprised to hear that her cousin was becoming a nun and sister Daria herself has said that while this is a calling that she felt um, inclined to go toward she's not necessarily giving up her previous life or her personality um, in previous life I mean like <laughs> you know interacting with um, her cousin or being friends or you know having a social life essentially outside of the nunnery which I thought that was something that was really interesting and to be honest I thought that the author handled it well I know sometimes the topic of religion in stories could get a little hit or miss but I think again it was handled very well here and I really enjoyed the scenes where um, sister Daria and Quinn are main character had these heart to hearts um, where she was essentially explaining her decision to go into um, the convent and so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to include her on this list another reason why I wanted to include her on this list is basically she is um, Quinn's right-hand woman essentially if I'd have to say I would say that she is more of a sidekick more than a side character at least in the first book. There's only one book in the series out so far, full disclosure, but she played a pretty integral role and it was fun watching them um, kind of <laughs> toss ideas back and forth and do their sleuthing and investigating together. And I'm really looking forward to reading more about Quinn. I did have a little insider scoop in talking with the author. 
Um, she did let me know that she has plans to continue Quinn's, or excuse me, Sister Daria's characters in later books. And so, like I mentioned, super excited to see where that goes. And I thought that this would be a fun and interesting one to kick our list off with. Next up, let's talk about Sinclair. Now, he is part of the Book Retreat Mystery Series, and um, I will say, I'm gonna flash a little spoiler warning here for those of you who haven't read the series or aren't familiar with it, because in order for me to talk about why he is on this list and why I love him so much, I'm gonna have to give away a pretty big plot element that happens in book one. So um, if you don't wanna hear about that, feel free to skip on to the next uh, sidekick on the list. So. For those of you who are sticking back around, <laughs> Sinclair is essentially the head librarian slash sensei um, that is featured in this series. And one of the reasons why I consider him the sensei is because he basically is the one who trains our main heroine as well as her sons in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, if you stuck around and you haven't read the series and you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> basically the Book Retreat Mystery series is centered around um, an actual book retreat like a B&B &B that you would go to escape to to lose yourself in books and libraries galore which sounds fabulous as readers right um, but in addition to that there's another hidden layer that we soon find out where um, everybody or nearly everybody who works at the um, retreat is part of this kind of secret society tasked with keeping the secrets of the library essentially and with that comes um, you know sometimes where you have to kick ass <laughs> and that was really surprising when i read about that it was such an unexpected twist um especially considering that there is so many countless um cozy mysteries about or centered around books this was definitely an added layer that i was not expecting the fact that we have um, multiple people within the book um trained in martial arts and different fighting styles because they will need to use them it's kind of like um what's a really good comparison i don't know it's kind of like in National Treasure when Nicolas Cage realized that there was like a secret or something that needed to be protected that's probably a horrible comparison this is way more interesting than National Treasure I promise <laughs> but regardless Sinclair is um, such a fun side character in this one especially since when you're introduced to him he is kind of this polite yet very straight-laced um, head of the library and it's in the second book after you kind of um learn the secrets and know and you're in on things um in the second book the scene actually opens with him in hand-to-hand -hand combat or at the very least training our main character because she has to stay on top of her fighting skills since now she has become a part of this underground secret group <laughs> tasked with protecting the library and the books so that's why i call him the sensei he's kind of like her martial arts trainer again super fun super unexpected and um definitely why sinclair deserves a spot on this list Next up, we have Grandma Daisies from the Magical Bookshop Mystery Series. Um, I don't even wanna say that I'm surprised that I put a grandma on this list because I love grandmas. If you guys have been around for a while, I'm sure you could have deduced that with my love of murder she wrote and all of that. <laughs> but let's be honest, it's something about a sassy old woman that just really tugs at your heartstrings and it's just so enjoyable to follow along with. And Grandma Daisy is definitely no exception. So the way that we're introduced to her is that in the first book, our main character is called back to her hometown or at the very least, um, the town where her grandmother owns this bookshop because the grandmother says that um, she's really ill and she needs her to come back and help and take over the bookstore naturally our amateur sleuth hurries back home or hurries to where grandma is only to see that grandma daisy is perfectly fine <laughs> she pulled the wool over all of our eyes and she really just wanted her granddaughter to come and help out with the bookshop she ends up doing that and the two of them get into so much trouble in the best kind of way um now, I haven't read all of the books in this series, but I would categorize Grandma Daisy, at least in the first book from what I re could remember, as more of a sidekick because she tags along with our amateur sleuth, helping her solve the crimes, inputting her two cents, and just being an overall good time. <laughs> Again, like I said, it's something about the kind of dichotomy between an older woman who society would expect to be just sitting in a wheelchair or a rocking chair and needle pointing and not really doing much um, 
but instead what she does is have a social life and be witty and and sassy and fully capable on her own sometimes even more capable than our main character and that is just so fun to follow along with um i'm looking forward to reading more about grandma daisy if i'm being honest um but uh, for the sake of this series, yes, she plays a pretty integral role and it makes the story a lot more enjoyable to follow along with. Next up, let's talk about the Booktown Mystery series. And the character that I want to talk about in this one is Angelica, our main heroine's sister. Now, full disclosure, I'm an only child, so um, understanding sibling relationships is not something that comes naturally to me, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed reading about Angelica and reading about their sibling relationship. So if I'm being totally honest, when we're first introduced to her, I don't like her very much, and I'm pretty sure that that was the author's intent. Um, Angelica came across as entitled, a little bit snobby, um, thinking that she's better than our main heroine, but um, by the middle or end of the book that kind of all changes now don't get me wrong she doesn't do a complete 180 but at the same time she does have personality growth to where it totally makes sense that our main character has forgiven her or wants to have a closer relationship with her and it just makes it a lot more fun when they team up together so when i say team up i would say that angelica oftentimes would be considered a sidekick in the first book she for sure helps out um, i forget which book number in the series it is but angelica actually ends up having um more of a feature role because later down the line she opens up her own bookshop um just side note really quick i probably should have said what this series is about but basically it centers around a town that um has a town square filled with different and individual bookshops which let's be honest sounds like a dream and so our main heroine obviously has her own bookshop and um, we get to see a lot of the other um, cast of characters and people who own different bookshops in the square. So that kind of brings it back around to the sister eventually opening up her own bookstore, which I believe is about cookbooks or something culinary. So like I mentioned, she ends up getting her own storyline at some point, which um, I was really excited to read about because like I mentioned, she played such an integral role in the first book and seeing the sisters interact with one another is just such a good time. Even though I'm an only child, um, their relationship seems very realistic. And that's one of the things why I really appreciated it. They're not constantly at each other's throat and they're not, you know, sickeningly sweet BFFs forever. They still clash heads, which I think is very realistic and something that I would expect happens in real life if these characters were real. And yeah, I just, I love reading with Angelica. I think that she is a good foil to our heroine. Their personalities, even though their siblings are different enough to where it keeps our character on her toes. And it just adds another um, fun element in this series altogether. Okay, next I have to talk about my beloved Bake Shop mystery series, um, but I'm only going to focus on a single character, don't worry, but I know that you guys have heard me mention this series multiple times before. Um, this time around, I do want to talk about Lance. Now, not sure why Siri turned on, okay? Anyway, <laughs> I want to talk about Lance. Now, Lance is uh, the head of the local theater in Ashland, and he is what I would call just a sassy drama queen in the best kind of way. Now, when I imagine Lance's character, I imagine him sidling up to Juliet, our main character, and locking his arms through his and leaning in conspiratorially with this juicy piece of gossip. Um, that's pretty much his character. And I love it. I love it so much. Now, I wouldn't say that he is a sidekick, but more of a side character. He doesn't necessarily play um, a huge integral role into solving all of the crimes, but whenever he is on page, he 100% steals the show. Um, now, as far as his character goes, he's known Juliet since she was young. He's seen her grow up. Um, Really quick premise of the story, she is a world-renowned chef working on a cruise ship when she ends up returning home, kind of, you know, to soothe a 
heartbreak after her husband cheated on her and she goes back to work with her mom at their family bakery etc etc now where Lance comes in at like I mentioned he is the head of the local theater but because he's essentially a family friend he's around all the time and again he steals the show <laughs> he's one of those people where um, he makes everything he says very dramatic he's one of those people where when he's telling a story he'll kind of pause at the right moment to make sure that you're leaning in at the edge of your seat and I just love that so much you know if Lance was a real person I would definitely want to be friends with him he's so enjoyable sometimes he gets on Juliet's nerves because you know he withholds information until she gives her own information and I know that can be frustrating for her but all in all he means well and he's just so fun to be around and that's one of the reasons that's the only reason <laughs> why I wanted to make sure that I gave him his due and included him on this list okay I know some of you are going to roll your eyes and not be at all surprised at um, basically the series that I'm going to talk about next. It would be off brand if I didn't, let's be honest, but um, basically Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> let's just keep it at that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you are familiar at all with the series, I'm sure you can guess who I'm about to say that is a side character. I'll go ahead and pause right now so that you can make your guess. Okay, so if you haven't guessed or you want to make sure that you're right, the character that I'm talking about is none other than Dr. Seth Hazlitt. Now, I will be 100% honest. Um, I am pretty sure my love of the show has seeped into my love of the books because when I think about Doc Hazlitt or Seth, I imagine him as the character he played or the person who played him in the TV show. Don't know the actor's name, but he is Seth. He embodies what I believe to be Seth's character is, and I love it so much. <laughs> Seth is essentially this curmudgeon, salty New Englander um, with a heart of gold, essentially. And that's one of the reasons why I adore his character so much, because him and Jess, excuse me, Jessica Fletcher, have a relationship a friendship that goes back decades and they are so simpatico with each other that um, it's just fun to see them banter because Seth frequently is around at the same time Jessica Fletcher is because he is called in to essentially examine the death when a murder happens since he's the town doctor and of course we know Jessica Fletcher always just manages to finagle her way in um, but the way that they react to the cases are completely opposite because Jessica wants nothing but to become more involved whereas Seth is like hey just take a step back this isn't your thing let the sheriff handle it <laughs> and while she respects his decision we both know that she doesn't listen but it's still nonetheless entertaining to watch them have this continuous fight um, every episode or every book series and like I mentioned, I really enjoy his character. One of the things that I love and that I'm relieved about is the fact that they have kept their relationship platonic and that they're just friends this whole time. Thank goodness to the author and the writers of the show for never trying to force a romantic relationship between the two of them because it just would ruin everything. Um, you know, not to say that either of them are bad, but I just really enjoy their friendship. And um, Seth is kind of like this big brother character. Again, he cares about Jessica very much, but at the same time, he gets frustrated with her because she never listens and she always butts her nose into the investigation. And I can just totally imagine him as one of those um, people that you meet when you're out of town who don't really take a liking to outsiders, but at the same time, he's still going to be very hospitable, still going to help you, and just, just an all around warm and cuddly guy, even if his exterior might be a little bit on the rough side. Okay, so I have to be honest, <laughs> this next character on the list, I know I have talked about this series probably three videos in a row now. Um, I'm not sorry about it. It's my goal to at least influence another person to pick this series up, but for the sake of this video, I did want to talk about uh, Donna Andrews' Meg Langslow series, but with a spotlight on Meg's grandfather, AKA Dr. Blake. Now, Dr. Blake is this 90-year-old um, super famous animal expert. I guess you could describe him as like a um, Jeff 
Kerwin kind of guy. I want to say Crocodile Dundee, but that's not right. He's way more than that. <laughs> but basically, he's made a career um, talking about animals and wildlife on TV. Um, he also has made a career outside of TV where he has um, spearheaded a lot of campaigns or um, animal protection and wildlife services and all that kind of good stuff. Basically, he's a wildlife expert. And bless you. It's my dog sneezing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> one of the reasons that I wanted to include him on this list, which by the way, he's definitely more of a side character than a sidekick. As much as I enjoy seeing him on the page, he's never actively helped our main character solve a crime, but still nonetheless, super interesting. And um, that said, his animal background definitely plays a huge role whenever he is on the page. Now, just really quickly, as if you don't already know what the series is about, it's basically about Meg. She is a blacksmith living with her family in a small town in Virginia, solving crimes, etc., etc. However, one of the things that I love about the books, and this is where Dr. Blake comes in, is that there is almost always an animal reference, or at the very least, an ornithological reference, because all of the titles are bird puns. Um, but that said, even if the crimes aren't necessarily animal related, animals are still somehow integrated into the plot, be it, you know, animals on their family farm or animals at the local zoo. And that's where Dr. Blake will oftentimes step in and kind of give his little um, nature fact or fact about the animals that's really interesting that uh, the characters around don't know. And then you as a reader also learn. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like this biology lesson dump to where you're just rolling your eyes and you're like, okay, this is getting a little bit too National Geographic, but it's integrated very seamlessly in the plot line, which makes it all the more interesting because in addition to obviously following along with Meg as she is solving crimes, you're also kind of getting these animal facts that you would have otherwise never known about. And maybe it's just me, but as a uh, you know, Nat Geo nerd, I really enjoy reading about that. So if you are like me, I would highly recommend at least picking a couple of them up. Though I will say the grandfather comes in later in the series. So if you want to read specifically about him and his character, um, definitely at least wait until book 10 to do so. Last up, I wanted to talk about the Stephanie Plum series. Now, I know I mentioned in my last video that it's technically a cozy mystery, but I sometimes struggle with wanting to add it to um, cozy mystery lists because it's a little bit more hard boiled and not like your other traditional cozy mysteries. However, this side character, um, sidekick rather, is so fun that it would be remiss of me not to have them on this list. And I'm talking about none other than Miss Lula Girl. <laughs> Technically her name is Lula, but she is the queen of sass and Stephanie Plum, our heroine's right hand woman throughout the entire series. Now, if you're not familiar with the series, just really quick, Stephanie Plum is working as a bounty hunter a not so great one. Um, and Lula is her, um, what would you call her? Um, sex worker, excuse me, ex sex worker who teams up and basically helps her out on cases. And the two of them just make a great team. Now, one of the reasons why I love Lula, probably the number one reason is her attitude. She is no nonsense. She's got um, what you would call street smarts most likely more than Stephanie, which definitely comes in handy because a lot of the times they find themselves in like shady and seedy parts of the neighborhood that Lula is very familiar with. And she knows how to handle things. She knows how to handle the situation. She obviously knows how to handle herself. And it's just so fun to see her interact. You never know what's gonna come out of her mouth. And um, one of the things that I can remember vividly, if you've seen the movie, which some people hated it. I didn't think it was that bad, but um, Katherine Heigl plays uh, Stephanie Plum, and I believe Sherry Shepard played Lula, which I thought was so perfect when it came out, because prior to that, when I was reading the books and I didn't have any kind of visuals to go along with it, I was imagining a woman just like her to play Lula. And so um, after that, when I did read the books or when I think about her, that's the type of woman that I envision. You've got this chocolatey skin, 
thick and curvy, self-confident woman who wears whatever she wants. A lot of times people think it's inappropriate, but she rocks the hell out of all of her dresses. And that plays such a um, humorous role because a lot of the times when they're on stakeouts or something like that, they clearly have to be inconspicuous. But here you have Lula in some like fire engine red, super short sequin mini skirt with all of her curves just rocking it and not even caring. And meanwhile, Stephanie is like in a black hoodie and a t-shirt trying to lay low. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's super fun. And, um, I really enjoy their relationship and Lula's character in general. Again, she's more of a sidekick rather than a side character because she does play an integral role a lot of times in helping Stephanie solve the mysteries. Okay, so there you have it. A roundup of some of my favorite cozy sidekicks slash side characters. Like I said before, some of these characters play an integral role, so I would consider them more of sidekicks, whereas others play more of a side character role where they're not super integral to the plot, but anytime they're introduced on the page they totally steal the show and I just love it when they are um, sharing dialogue with our main character because it just makes the story that much better so that said, let me know if you've read any of these, if you agree with my sidekick choices, if you have other ones that you think should have been mentioned, both in the series that I've talked about, as well as other cozy mysteries. Because let's be honest, we know, especially when it comes to cozy mysteries with long series, um, what to expect from our hero or heroine. But a lot of the time, what gives it that kind of extra element or that extra bump up and makes it stand out are the side characters. So to have side characters that are interesting or stand on their own or have these big personalities or some kind of quirky trait it just makes it so much fun and let's be honest a lot more memorable as well anyway that said i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe and in the meantime i'll talk to you guys later bye